All right, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about the gas laws um, that we've talked about so far. So this is part one of gas laws, and we'll have another video that will cover the rest of them. So you've been introduced to them in class, and we also had the video um, from TED-Ed that talks about the ABCs of the gas laws. So today I'm just going to go over them um, real quick, um, just do a summary of all of them and a few examples of how we will do problems with these. So the first one we're going to talk about is Boyle's Law. And Boyle's Law um, is the relationship between pressure and volume. And these things are inversely related, which means that as one goes up, the other one is going to go down. <clears throat> and the equation that is associated with Boyle's Law is P1V1 equals P2V2. Okay, so the example we have here is a sample of hydrogen gas has a volume of 5.0 liters and a pressure of 1.0 atmospheres. So you know right away that since you're given volume and pressure that this must be a Vo Boyle's Law problem. All right, so we our initial pressure and volume are 1.0 atmospheres and 5.0 liters. So that's our P1 and our V1. And then it says that our final pressure, or what is the final pressure in atmospheres if the volume is decreased to 2 liters with no change in temperature or amount of gas. So this tells us that P2 is what we're trying to find, that's our X, and V2 is 2.0 liters. Okay, so we can write this as um, P1 is 1.0 atmosphere times V1, which is 5.0 liters, is equal to P2, which is our X, times V2, which is 2.0 liters. All right, now this is just basic algebra. I'm going to assume that you can do um, problems like this and solve for x. If you have problems, please come see me. So if we solve for x in this problem, um, we do five, or 1 times 5 divided by 2, and so that gives us a P2 of 2.5 atmospheres. Now here we have another Boyle's Law problem, but this time um, our unknown is the volume instead of the pressure. So here we have um, a gauge on a 12-liter tank of compressed oxygen reads 3,800 millimeters of mercury. So remember, millimeters of mercury is another unit of pressure. How many liters would this same gas occupy at a pressure of 740 millimeters of mercury if the temperature and amount of gas do not change? Okay, so our initial volume is going to be 12 liters, and our initial pressure is going to be 3,800 millimeters of mercury. And what we're trying to find is the liters at the end, so that's our V2, and we have a final pressure of 740 millimeters of mercury. So if we do uh, P1 is 3,800 times V1, which is 12 liters, is equal to P2, which is 740, times V2, which is our X. All right, if we solve for X in this case, if we multiply 3,800 times 120, we get 456,000. And then if we divide both sides by 740, that gives us a final volume of 616 liters. All right, now we're going to do Charles' Law. So Charles' Law is the relationship between volume and temperature. Um, and they are directly proportional, which means that as one goes up, the other one also goes up. And the equation that goes with Charles' Law is V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. All right, and just a reminder that anytime you're doing gas law problems, the temperatures must be in Kelvin, and this is the conversion here. All right, so the example we have here is a sample of argon gas has a volume of 5.40 liters and a temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. What is the final volume in liters of the gas after the temperature has been increased to 42 degrees Celsius at constant pressure and amount of gas? All right. So we have our initial volume is equal to 5.40 liters. Our initial temperature is 15 degrees Celsius, but we need to add 273 to that. So that gives us 288 degrees Kelvin. Our final volume is what we're find, trying to find. So our V2, we're just going to call X. And our te final temperature is going to be 42 degrees Celsius, but we get, again, we need to convert that to Kelvin. So that's 315 degrees Kelvin. All right, so if we plug that into our equation, we have 5.4 over 288 is equal to x over 315, right? And if we divide 5.4 by 288, that gives us 0 0.01875. Divided by 315 gives us x is 5.9 liters, all right? And you always want to go back and make sure these numbers make sense based on what you know about the gas law. So if um, our temperature goes up, we know that 
based on Charles' law, the two are directly proportional. So if our temperature is going up, our volume also has to go up, and it does. It goes up by just a little bit, about a half a liter. All right, and the last gas law for today is Gay-Lussac's law. And the Gay-Lussac law is the relationship between pressure and temperature. And again, these two, these two values are directly related, assuming that the temperature is in Kelvin. And the equation is P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. All right, so let's do this example. Aerosol containers can be dangerous if they are heated because they can explode. Suppose a container of hairspray with a pressure of 4.0 atmospheres at room temperature of 25 degrees is thrown into a fire. If the temperature of the gas inside the aerosol can reaches 402 degrees Celsius, what will be its pressure in atmospheres if the volume and the amount of gas do not change? All right, so um, our initial pressure is 4.0 atmospheres, that's our P1, and our initial temperature, our T1, is 25 degrees Celsius. Again, remember, we need to convert that to Kelvin, so that is 298 degrees Kelvin. And our final pressure is what we're looking for, so P2 is just going to be X, and T2 is uh, 402 degrees Celsius, um, which we again need to convert to Kelvin, so that's 675 degrees Kelvin. Okay, now if we plug that into our equation, we get 4.0 over 298 is equal to x over 675. All right, and then if we do 4.0 divided by 298 times 675, that gives us an x of 9.1 atmospheres. So that's really high pressure. So don't throw your can of hairspray into the fire. All right, so that wraps up our um, discussion of the first three gas laws uh, that we um, have learned in class. Um, Next time, we'll talk about the um, Avogadro's law and also the ideal gas law.